Well, good morning. Uh, as you can see, I'm back down the canal this morning. I'm following on from last week's video um, where I've visited a small pool. I've been told about another pool that hopefully uh, might be a bit better, it's a bit cleaner, and uh, hopefully there might be some more stuff on it. So I've come down again this morning to the canal and uh, I'm going to check this pool out and see what's on there. Hopefully some insects, that's the plan. But obviously anything else that's about today, um, we'll sell a look. So, we'll see what we can find. I think I um, found the first subject now. I've come back to the pond I was on last week, uh, which is literally, I didn't realise, but it's actually right next door to the first pond. So I've come back to the second one, just having a wander around, and I've found this tiny green, bright green spider just sitting on a leaf, or just hanging above the leaf, I should say, on a, on a web. So I'm just taking the opportunity while he's still, just to get the tripod out and uh, so we'll get some shots of him. He's, um, he's really not moving so that should be good. I'm actually using the macro lens on the, six, on the 7D Mark II now. I had a question about it last week after last week's video so thank you for that. Um, sorry I've left my phone at home I haven't got access to the names stupidly but anyway but thank you I'll put your name here somewhere thank you for that comment anyway. So I'm going to try it I've never done this before on the 7D Mark II that is a crop sensor and um, see if it makes a difference. Well, it should do, but we'll see. I haven't done this before. So, um, okay, so I'm on the live view mode, as you can see. What I'm going to do is just going to um, zoom in just 10 times here. And we just make, get in this central frame. And then, oh, it is a windy this morning, as you can see. And the problem is. tiniest movements on a macro lens are like a gale force wind <laughs> sorry there you go so he's moving about a bit but I've got him as best I can in focus I'll leave him alone now I think the main issue I've got today is it's going to be the light um, I'm pushing the 7d up to about a thousand ISO which is about as high as I want to go with it really but it's only giving me a shutter speed at f9 of an 80th of a second and in conditions that are slightly breezy that's tough so i'll have a look at those but i don't know um i might have to try a different method Well, it's, it's uh, starting to be a bit of a challenge this morning, and for several reasons. Firstly, um, oh my god, it's a peregrine. Oh. Oh my god, why does this happen to me? I can't do macro photography. I've got my 100mm lens on. Peregrine flies over the top. You didn't see it, I oh know, I'm sorry. Take it from me, that was a peregrine. Anyway, get back to it. Alright, oh, it's gone. Uh, 
Right, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is um, something that's sitting still in a sheltered area and it's not too dimly lit and I can try some focus stacking. If I get the chance, I'll go through the method I use and uh, hopefully it'll produce some better results. There's a jade just going over. See, <laughs> I picked the wrong day to do insects, should be near birds, should I? Anyway, I've come down right to the water's edge and um, I found quite a few damselflies here. And the problem is they're kind of on the reeds in the water. Um, so I'm going to try and get as close as I can. If I can do a photo stack, fo if I can do a focus stack, I will. It's going to have to be handheld though because it's very tight here and uh, potentially I'm going to get wet. That's how clumsy I am. Anyway, let's give it a go. I've just tried to do a focus stack and um, the method I'm using is um, handheld, which isn't always ideal of course. Uh, I've got it on um, high speed shutter. I'm getting about 10 frames a second out of the, the 7D which is great. And then it's just a case of manual focus and trying to keep the camera as steady as possible. And as you're pressing the shutter release, just turning the focus wheel like that. The idea then is that you've got a, a good percentage of um, shots in focus of different parts of the animal. So you, then you take them into Photoshop, stick them all together, and hopefully you get a nice sharp image. I don't know <laughs> because the conditions aren't brilliant. I will try and if it's any good I'll put it up for you. That's the general the way I, I do it. You can, the other method of, is to keep the focus fixed and then actually move as you're taking the pictures so you're going to move yourself like that. Um, I've had more success moving the focus wheel but that's probably because I'm old and I find it easier to stay in one position and move the focus wheel rather than move myself back and forwards. So the 7D Mark II with the macro lens. Uh, okay it's good and bad really. So the good points are that because it's a crop sensor lens it turns my 100mm into I think it's about a 160 equivalent. I think it's something like 1.6. Um, it also the 7D gives me 10 frames a second which when you're doing things like focus stack um, when it's like a daylight when it's windy it's great because you've got more potential to get a sharp shot. Downsides are that um, obviously picture quality um, is probably not as good, well I know it's not as good as the 5D Mark IV because the sensor is uh, a crop sensor and it's less megapixels and also the ISO performance on the 7D is nowhere near as good as the 5D so when it's dull and overcast um, you can only push the ISO so far and you're limiting your shutter speed which um, when you do macro photography can be quite um, devastating really. So there's good and bad. Um, I'll definitely use it again with a macro um, but yeah well, we'll look at the pictures later and see. So, But yeah great, I'm, I'm soaking wet, I've got my foot in the canal, my trousers are soaking wet but the sun came out, I've got some damselflies um, so <laughs> happy days! It's been great again. And this is what this is what makes you um, makes you come out time after time, even when you think it's going to be a rubbish day. Suddenly things turn around, and it's just been absolutely fantastic. The dams of flies are just stunning. I'll look them up and I'll tell you what sort they are. Same sort I did last week, I think. Um, but I'll look them up anyway. But great. <laughs> Right, I'm heading home now then. That's, uh, that's been a fantastic morning. I've really enjoyed that in the end. I was getting a bit concerned earlier when it rained and it was cloudy, but it turned out really well in the end, so I'm happy. Uh, I've seen a peregrine. I've seen jays and damselflies. Oh, brilliant. Anyway, so thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. And um, I'll see you again in the next video.
I've got three photos in Lightroom. Um, I only needed three really because it was almost um, square onto me when I was taking the pictures. Um, and of course it depends on how fast you turn the focus wheel. So I've ended up with three. Uh, that one's relatively sharp at the front, that one more down the wings and that one on the end. So it's a very quick simple process. I like them all and I'm going to edit in Photoshop as layers. Okay, so now I've got the three layers in Photoshop. I'm just going to highlight all the layers. I'm going to edit, auto align, and accept all the default settings. And this will just uh, then. <laughs> Sorry about the dog. This will then just put all the uh, images on top of each other in alignment. That's done that, and as you can see, it's moved some of the photos around slightly. And then again, just go to edit. And this time it'll auto blend and I'm going to accept all the standard settings again. And this will now pick out all the sharp bits of the images and mask them together. Okay, and that's the finished image. Now that's very quick, very simple. Uh, got a decent image, so I'm going to just um, merge these now together and save it back into Lightroom and do a few more edits and I'll put it up on the video for you.